everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make this one layer scene card using Copic markers and the Drink Up the Sunshine stamp set by MFT Stamps. And I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Usually I would just narrate um, the technique that I am doing on screen and tell you what colors I'm using as I go along. But today I thought uh, instead of that, since this video is pretty self-explanatory and you can see all the markers on screen and you can clearly see what I'm doing as I do it, that I would use this video as an opportunity to go through the 20 questions that different YouTube creators who have art channels or craft channels have been answering. Um, so without further ado, I guess let's get right into it. So the first question is, where does your channel name come from? And for YouTube, my channel name is Tappleberry Lane, and that comes from kind of an interesting place. When I was trying to think up a name for my channel, I wanted to make sure it would have a word that had no other meaning in the English language, so it would be pretty easy to find. And the first experience that I had online was in 1995, um, back when you got your internet through AOL and it was really, really expensive. So the first thing that I ever did online was play a game called Dragon Realms. And in that game, there were these little fruits called Taffelberries. So I've always kind of liked that name. I thought it was really, really cute. And I thought that um, one, it'd be a good name for a channel because Taffelberry is an odd name. Two, it has kind of a whimsical sound to it. And then three, it was part of the first thing that I ever did online. And since I'd be doing something on YouTube online, I just thought it was fitting. So that's the story about where my channel name comes from. On Instagram, my name there is Antonia Florence. And where that comes from, it's my first and middle name. So that's where that name comes from on Instagram. So the next question is what type of art does your channel focus on? So I focus primarily on card making and in particular the two types of card making I, I like to do are the single layer scenes with Copic markers and then I also like to do interactive cards. So if a company comes out with a new product where you can, I don't know, make a card do stuff like you pull a lever and something happens or you shake it and something happens, I'm really into that and I like um, I like figuring out how those work and then um, demonstrating it online. So those are the two types of cards I, I focus on, the interactive ones and then these Copic scene cards. So then the next question is, where else do you share your creations online? And so I also share creations on Instagram. I do a lot of short Instagram videos with very sped up versions of coloring that you may see on this channel. And then there's additional content that I put on Instagram as well. I find that, um, you know, if you're pressed for time, Instagram is a really great way to share your art in a, a pretty quick and expeditious and easy way. So if you want to see more from me and you're not getting enough on YouTube, then definitely um, follow me on Instagram because I do post a lot more on Instagram. I do not have a blog um, and that's intentional. I don't have a blog because I feel that that would um, take away from the time that I have to do art and I want all of the, the free time that I have um, to devote to this hobby to be really just focused on the creation of, of art and not so much on all the administrative aspects of it. So I find that YouTube, I can do a video pretty quickly and Instagram, I can get up content very, very quickly. So I share my art that way. The next question is how long have you been making art? And the answer to that is a little bit over three years. So I just started collecting Copic markers in, I think it was May of 2016. So a little over three years ago. And I started with just, um, just my own drawings and kind of um, doing online tutorials for different YouTube creators who would make manga art and things like that. And then by November of 2016, I started getting into card making. I found some 
great videos online demonstrating Lawn Fawn products and Gina K products. Um, and I just fell in love with card making then and I started in November 2006. So it's almost three years that I have been making cards. So what is the first artsy item you remember making? Um, it would be, well, it depends. For card making, it was a Christmas card that I had made following one of Gina Kay's online tutorials. And then for just regular art, manga art, it would have to be um, a little picture of Ariana Grande that I had made when I I first started in May of 2016. So the next question is, what is your favorite type of art? And I would have to say Copic coloring. I really enjoy it. I find that even though I've been doing it for over three years now, I'm learning every day and I feel like um, I'm still trying to understand how all the colors work together, what are the best combinations, how to get different textures, different techniques. I just find that there's still a lot of um, room for me to grow with Copics. So um, I guess that's, that's my favorite. And that's why, because I can keep growing as I keep doing. Um, the next question, which of your creations is currently your favorite? Um, I have to say, you know, they're all kind of my baby, so I love them all, of course. But if I had to pick one set of creations, they would have to be these cards that I made, um, making it look like the characters were in the middle of a rainstorm. And I learned that technique from Sandy Olnock's class that she released earlier this spring, and I just had a lot of fun making those scenes of rain and downpours and putting characters in the middle. So. Those I would say are currently my favorite. Next question is, what do you do with your finished products? Do you sell them? Do you give them away? Do you keep them to yourself? And so for me, I mean, I try to give everything away. I don't sell anything. I've been asked um, if, if people could buy my, my stuff and I always say no. I'm more than happy to give it away if, it's, if the postage is acceptable. Um, I, also um, will donate some of my works to charity, especially um, at work. We have some charities that we support, so I will donate cards there. I'll give out cards to users. Sometimes I have giveaway videos, which you've probably seen, where I ask people to join a raffle, and then I send people boxes of cards. I give cards to my friends and my family, and I really try to make sure that almost everything I make I give away because it's no good um, I think just to have art sitting around in a box it should be loved and enjoyed by someone and I create way too much stuff to love and appreciate everything that I make so that's um, that's what I do with all my art projects the next question is if you could learn a new art what would it be I would say probably watercolor um, I think that that's another area where you can just keep learning and learning and learning and there's a lot of opportunities for growth. Um, I try it every now and then. I give it like a little baby try and um, then I kind of back off. I think the, the issue for me with watercoloring is that you have to, um, I think it's the difference between people who like to bake and people who like to cook. So if you like to bake, then I bet you probably love Copic markers. Um, and the reason for that is baking is very specific. You have to follow a specific recipe um, and then you'll get results. You can't really, um, you know, wing it when you're, when you're baking. You have to follow a recipe in order to get a good result. And Copic markers are kind of the same way. It's sort of like there's a recipe that you follow. It's very controlled. I know if I put the ink here, it's going to do this. If I put it there, it's going to do that. I feel like I have a lot of control over my art when I'm using Copics and that is appealing to me. Watercolor, I think is the opposite. I think you have to just kind of give in um, and just, you know, follow the water's lead. And that has been difficult for me, but it's also one of the reasons why I keep going back to it because I think that there are big opportunities for growth for me if I'm able to get more into watercoloring. So the next question is, 
where do you create? And I create right in the middle of my house. So I live by myself and I do have spare rooms. If I wanted to have a craft room, I could set one up, but I feel that I spend so little time in my home as it is that when I'm here, I wanna be right in the center of everything. So I kind of have my art supplies there, not like spread out through my house, but they're kind of definitely incorporated into the decor of my house. So right now editing this video, I'm sitting in my living room slash um, office area. And then I will actually do my art projects on my um, kitchen island. Um, and I'll look out the window at through some double doors that I have. And I have all these cute little birds that I feed and I watch them like as I do my art. So it's um, a setup that I have to, yes, like take down and, and put up every time I wanna use it because it's also my dining room or my kitchen area, but I just like kind of being right in the middle of my home when I'm, when I'm creating art and I, I really like looking out the window at the birds. So that's how, that's where I create. So the next question is, what does your workspace look like? I think I just explained that. It's basically the first level of my house. Um, and the next question is, have these next two, I don't really have anything on these. I'll just tell you what the questions are and then I guess we'll move on. So have you had any artsy accidents or mishaps? I mean, fortunately, no. Um, I'm always worried I'm gonna spill ink on you know, my, my kitchen island countertop, which would be really sad. Um, but fortunately, I haven't done that yet. Um, do I have any funny artsy stories to share? Um, no, it's not really, you know, when I'm creating, it's fun and relaxing, but I can't think of anything funny that happens. Um, next question, what is your favorite drink or snack to have while, while making art? Um, my drink of choice is Coke Zero. Um, I need some caffeine to keep me going and I like that it's, I drink it from the can so that if I spill it, the spill is controlled. It's pr probably one of the reasons I don't drink coffee while I am making art because it could spill all over the place. Um, I don't eat anything because I don't want to get, um, any, um, you know, food on my hands that then could be transferred to the, to the art project. So my uh, art time is an eating free zone. The next question is, do I watch or listen to anything while I make art? And if so, what? And yeah, so one of my favorite things is to listen to podcasts or to, um, to books. I, I listen to a lot of audio books when I'm making art. I also watch other people's videos as well but i find that um you know I, I don't pay attention then um so usually when i'm watching videos to learn what other people are doing or learn new techniques i'll watch that like right before i go to bed so i can focus on it and then when i'm actually making art i'll listen to different podcasts and um different different audiobooks and i found that some weekends i can actually get through an entire book um, in one weekend, just if I'm working on a lot of projects. So I get a lot of my, my reading in that way, as a matter of fact. So the next question is, what is your biggest art purchase regret? And this one I think is gonna be surprising to some people. So two years ago, I bought a scanning cut and it is sitting next to me in the box. I've never, I've never opened it. So I know from what I hear from other people, it's a life-changing experience, but for whatever reasons, I still have not gotten around to opening the box and I still buy dies for um, all the stamps that I, that I purchase. I think one of the issues is one, I don't wanna take the time to learn how to do something new, even though it probably would take just 10 minutes. And um, I'd rather be learning how to do new coloring techniques. And then two, I would have to find a place to put it. And you know, that's always an issue, like finding space to put something. So that's it for question 16. Question 17, what's your favorite art purchase? I would have to say definitely my Copic markers. I love them. I feel like they're an extension of my hands. I can't live without them. Um, three more questions to go. And 18 is, if you could only use one adhesive for your projects, what would it be? It definitely would be a tape runner. I like it because it's really fast and controlled. It's a little bit expensive, but I am willing to deal with the expense just because of the speed it gives me in making my projects. 
Next question, if you could only use products from one company for the next month, which would you choose? Definitely MFT stamps. I love MFT. I especially love the Birdie Brown line, which this little stamp comes from. And then last question, um, who is one crafter that you love to watch and follow? And do you think that you think needs some more love from the crafty community? Um, and offhand, I think all the people that I watch are, are pretty popular people. They have more, um, more viewers than I do. So offhand, I can't really think of anyone, but I would love to hear from you below as to who you think, um, some of the crafters or, or artists that you're watching that you think could just use some more followers or some more love. Definitely post below in the comments who you think fit that bill. All right. So that's all I have for you now, everyone. I hope, hope this was interesting and I will see you again in the next video.